Okay, here's the uh, little movie on float hunting. There's my Scott canoe on this big 20 there, or on an undisclosed river in the Yukon. There's my son with our eating moose. And uh, there I'm with my partner, and we're starting to uh, clean this uh, critter. And uh, my impella knife there, I'm going to make a small little movie here about uh, tools used uh, and lessons, some of the lessons learned from uh, float hunting this year. And uh, it's a lot of fun, a very productive way to go. And uh, so I hope you enjoy this movie. Thank you. Okay, the sound you hear is the sound of a, a jerky maker going, and that's always a good sound in hunting season. So went for another uh, moose hunt and was successful with my partner. Uh, we're uh, really doing a lot of float hunting, and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, some tools to, to use. This is a great tool, this book here, Float Hunting by Larry Bartlett. There's other float hunting books. I like this one the best. Larry also has a, uh, a great website. He uses more, a lot more static stuff. I think he's a very athletic chap and, uh, and uh, uses uh, rafts and that kind of thing. We use a freighter canoe with a motor, so we cheat a little bit, but a lot of the techniques in here are really, really good. Last video I talked about uh, the perfect knife for moose hunting, and I talked about using this Impella. Uh, and I thought this Impella would be a, a great knife, and indeed it is. And it's got a great combination of uh, point and sweep. Um, if anything, um, the, sh the, the tip is just a tiny bit blunt for, uh, for, for, for my use, but that's, that's, that was a very, very good knife. Um, I started to reconsidering my knife choices. Uh, I also use this little knife on this trip. And this is a Blade Tech. It's a Wagner design, and that's the Blade Tech Junior, and I found that great for caping. It's actually got a very great distal taper, and uh, so it thins out very, very nicely. It's got a very nice point, and enough sweep to actually be a useful little skinner. You could probably do a whole moose with that little tiny knife. Uh, I also took this knife out. This is a very great Canadian design, and that's uh, a Roman knife. This particular knife is a flat grind, and it's got a nice combination of features. Um, so I think I'm zeroing in on, a, on some very, very good knives and knife shapes. Uh, we use gutless skinning. Uh, what I bought when I came back, because I always seem to be in the quest, is this Ken Onion knife. And this is the Ken Onion Skinner. And looking at all the combination of things that I want, one of the reasons I like a, like a pocket knife is that they're light and easy to carry. Um, there's no difference in weight. In fact, I think there's probably a slight edge of, of weight with this knife. It's a D2 steel. I used to make knives. I might make, make knives a lot less now because of the fantastic, uh, what you can buy. This is a $50 knife. D2 steel or a German equivalent of D2. It's got tremendous distal taper. Uh, it's got a tremendous little point here, which is also a dropped point. Um, so that could be used for, for gutting the animal. And a very nice sweep that's got a continuous sweep if you put that on a flat surface. It's a continuing sleep, sweep. So uh, I think that'll be an excellent skinner. Ken sent this to a whole whack of uh, knife users and uh, guides in Alaska and asked them for their, uh, for their feedback and incorporated the feedback in this knife. And I can, I can see it. I, I just think looking at this knife, this might be the knife. And what you want to do is try to take one thing. And I think this has got a combination of all the things you need for gutless skinning including that distal taper, which we'll see if we can, we can get in there and just see how thin that point thins to. So you could easily use a controlled grip there and do some very, very fine cuts, as well as using that whole sweep to, uh, to uh, skin the animal and the drop point for gutting the animal. And again, Ken Onion design. It's uh, called the Ken Onion Skinner. On the uh, box it says unusually unusual skinner. I think really I'm very very interested in trying that knife out and I think I'll leave everything else at home. Um, so that's uh, going to be my choice for next year and that's basically I came back, thought about it, took a look at some different designs and I'm thinking 
for my use that might be the, the moose knife for myself. The uh, one thing I also uh, really am high on after this trip is a couple of tools. This is one of them. This is a Grand First Brooks. Uh, it's a design winner. I've been using this for many, many years. I've used it for a lot of caribou. This is uh, about the second or third moose I've taken this out on. And uh, when you do gut the skinning, you basically uh, skin the animal, pop the uh, pop the quarters off, uh, cut the brack strap off, and then it's it really a heavier tool, especially if you're in a hurry, is quite nice. This has got excellent, excellent steel quality. I uh, took the the, uh, the ribs off with this, and no, ch not even micro chipping on that blade. It's also got a rounded pole, which uh, people say you can use for removing skin. I haven't really been able to use it much for that. It does have a very um, textured uh, handle here, so that even when that's fairly slick with blood, it doesn't slip. So this is a tremendous, and you can also use it as a, as a camp axe. So that's that was a fantastic piece of equipment on this trip. The other thing is you need a saw. I'm trying to use some multi multi tools here. So I started using this as my saw. It's a little bit coarse, but it does work as a bone saw. It's the Baco Pro Cut Timber. A little coarse, but this is a fantastic uh, saw for uh, for wood. So I get double duty out of that saw, and uh, I'm really uh, really enjoying that saw. So that's a, that's the saw that I take with me. I haven't used it too much on moose, but I don't see why it won't work, and I'll try that next time that I go out. What this does do is a great job on uh, timber, so I always take that with me. And it comes with this great little uh, guard so that you don't cut yourself. So give that a go next time. Uh, another thing I thought I'd show you today is just tools I always take with me for, for repair. Of course, I've got all the motor. I use a 20 horsepower Honda two-stroke, but uh, also got all sorts of tools here, and they're mostly woodworking tools for fixing the boat. Uh, I've got another little canister with some epoxy in it, nails, that sort of thing. So I always take this with me and it all fits in this little bag and it's a nice little multi-tool. Um, uh, it's better than any one multi-tool that I've found. I always take a gimlet. That gimlet is a great little thing for uh, making holes. Let's say something breaks on your boat. Uh, you break a paddle, you want to wire it to some things together. It's nice to be able to make holes. That makes holes very, very, very easily. Uh, if you need to extend the size of that hole, it's always nice to have an awl. An awl also works good for uh, fixing material, so I always have that with me. Uh, this is your one-stop sh uh, one shopping center for woodwork. This is a uh, crooked knife, and this is a very traditional tool. And this can be used as a plane by someone who knows how to use it, which I'm starting to. It can be used as a gouge. And basically, there's two reasons why it's crooked. One is the... Uh, handle shape, which is uh, which is like that, so you, you handle that like that with your thumb along there, it gives you all the power of the muscles in your back, and you use it in a pulling action. And the other crooked part is the tip of this knife, you can see how it, how it has a little curve in it, and that's useful for spoons and that sort of thing. So uh, this is a tremendous thing if you needed to make a shape an in-whale out of a piece of spruce or whatever you needed to do to, to do any kind of repair. Uh, and carve a paddle. With these two tools you'd be pretty much set to carve a paddle and I do practice that kind of thing. It's kind of a nice traditional skill to practice. Um, so that's the crooked knife. That can be made out of an old Nicholson file. Nicholson files make a great, great, great little file. You can also buy these in various places and usually you're, you self-handle them. So this is handled with a piece of maple. And I built this little sheath for it, which is a Scandinavian type sheath, just to keep it in out of trouble. I like this little saw. These are the little Coghlan Sierra saws. And they make a tremendous little saw for shaping, fine shaping. They can save you a little bit of time. Um, little tiny knife for, uh, for very, very fine carpentry work. And a little file. Which this is a very light file, I think it's for chainsaws, and that all fits in there. I also have a piece of leather with some stropping compound on it to keep everything sharp as a razor, and that all fits in there. And these are all little tools that we use uh, for, uh, that I take out with me when I'm going in the freighter canoe, 
I'm very, very high on this idea of, of, uh, of float hunting. It's a great productive way to get moose. I'm very excited about moose hunting. This is uh, only about the third year, fourth year we've been really going out and being successful with moose and now we seem not to be able to miss with moose as we understand the animals. But that knife, again, just going back to that, Can Onion Unusual Skinner. The only thing I worry about is it's a little bit short. The one thing you need a long knife for seems to be that back strap meat removal. You might need to take two slices with that to get in there. No big deal. But uh, I'm going to try taking that out as my one knife. I can't wait for moose hunting next, uh, next year. Uh, but we'll have to wait a year before our freezer is empty again because a moose has a lot of meat on it. So I'll put some pictures of our trip on this uh, same video and uh, hopefully that's uh, been interesting for, for some folks. Get on your Skinner. I think it's going to be a good one. Thank you.